Broadcasts of Hiki no are made possible by the support of viewers like you. Mahalo! And by Bank of Hawaii Foundation. Investing in Hawaii's future by promoting collaboration, critical thinking, and other 21st century skills through Hiki no. Next on Hiki no, stories from across our island chain. My coach lost his daughter, and she, it was his one and only child, so it was very emotional. A long distance run is renamed to honor the memory of a young woman who lost her battle with cancer. Learn 10 creative things you can do while not using your smartphone. Find out how some Windward Oahu third graders use earthworms to create nutrient-rich fertilizer. Listen to a Hawaii Island man as he recounts his journey about the love of his life. Learn how to create a t-shirt design out of recycled materials. And meet a championship-winning high school football coach who makes life lessons his top priority. All on this episode of the nation's first statewide student news network, Hiki no. Can do. Hi, welcome to Kapolei High School in Central Oahu, home of the Hurricanes. During today's episode of Hikino, you'll learn about the origins of many school mascots. Did you know that the graduating class of 2004 actually voted on our school's mascot? We could have been anything from the mongoose to the mudskippers. Luckily, Hurricanes won. Speaking of the mudskippers, we actually have statues of mudskippers around our school. Some even thought we changed our mascot to the mudskippers, but we didn't. What's really cool about being the Hurricanes is that our football season coincides with the hurricane season. Well, now that you know a little bit about our school, here's a story about one of our teachers here at Copley High School, Mr. George, who lost his 19-year-old daughter to cancer, and how our Copley High community helped rally around him to show him support. You can never see a community's unity until tragedy strikes. My coach lost his daughter, and she, it was his one and only child, so it was very emotional. Bailey was a cross-country runner. She excelled in high school. She also went to Evansville University in Evansville, Indiana on a cross-country scholarship. His stories about her and just his, her, his pictures of her, and we got to see her graduate and then attend college. In college, Bailey was diagnosed with metastatic melanoma. In the bones. It wasn't on the skin, um, so it was very hard to detect. It took them over a year going through all kinds of different testing to figure it out. She was born and uh, the nurses were holding her and they're like, do you want to hold her? That's, that's a day I'll never forget. That and that and the last day. Mr. George and his students had an impact on each other. Every day during practice, he'd always tell us about, you know, you guys, if you keep up at this, you know you can run just like my daughter. And the, that was like his will to him. Mr. George was my teacher, and I just, we were pretty close to him. And once he gave us the news, it was pretty sad. And I just wanted to make him proud. The kids in the school mean a lot to me. And they, they, they make me want to do more and more in this community, in the school, so they all succeed. Because without my student support those last three months, I, I couldn't have been in class every day and doing it. But, and just coming here thinking that my students, now they're all my kids. And if I don't go in, I'm letting them down. And my daughter wouldn't want me to let anybody else down. So it meant, meant a lot to have their support. The school wanted to give back to Mr. George. Our PE department is really close-knit and we're all just like family. So we saw him as a brother. So anything that happens to one of our brothers, we see as family. And so that made Bailey part of our family also. This year's annual hurricane run is dedicated to Mr. George's daughter, Bailey. The thoughts going through my head, what can we do to help? What can we do to honor her? And so we came up with the Bailey George Memorial Run instead of the hurricane run. Students were coming up to me when I got back and asking me about it. And I was like, I don't know what you're talking about. And then Mr. Q, Mr. Lee, Mr. Aronica, Mr. Kasi, they all, we all had a meeting and they told me. Um, my reaction was I started crying right away. Granted, I would trade anything in the world to have her here still, but seeing all the things that everybody's still doing for her, it, it means a lot. It doesn't make it easier, but it helps you, helps you wake up with a smile on certain days. 
This is Zaya Kane from Kaplei High School for Hiki No. Up next, students from Kapa'a Middle School in Kauai offer some fun ways to get away from a device most people can't seem to put down. Staying on phones and other technology too long has become a problem for many people. The average person checks their phone over 46 times a day. That's according to Deloitte Global. I know, I know, keeping streaks with your friend and sending pics with dog ears are fun, but when you're doing that, you're missing out on many things, like nature, fun experiences, and activities. This is a problem that needs to change. So here are 10 fun and even useful things to do without your phone. 1. Interact with someone. How about that kid in your class you've never talked to before? Strike up a conversation. How was your day? How are you doing? 2. Help your community. Whether it's picking up trash or collecting clothes for your local shelter, every little bit counts. 3. Try out a new hobby. If it's joining a sport, learning an instrument, or stamp collecting, make it happen. 4. Volunteer at a nearby animal shelter, like the Humane Society. You can spend time with the animals, learn how to take care of them, and they'll become accustomed to people. Number five, attend a local group activity. Maybe your neighborhood hosts a get-together every week. You can make new friends and have a really great time. Six, explore the world around you. Check out that hike you've heard of. If you're stumped, look at Google Maps for a place to discover first, then put away your phone and go on the adventure. Seven, write a short story. Is there anything on your mind? Maybe you can turn it into a mini novel. Let your imagination run free. Eight, take something old and upcycle it. Have some old jeans? You can turn them into shorts, a purse, or add patches to it. Get creative. Number nine, go to the library. Check out that book you've been wanting to read. Ask a friend or a family member for a suggestion before you visit. Number 10, sing a song in the mirror. Say hello to the newest star. Get off your phone and try out these ideas, and you'll definitely feel like you lived a little more. This is Kylie McEwen from Kapa'a Middle School for Hikino. Hikino is now on Instagram. For show updates and a peek behind the scenes, follow us on Instagram at Hikino Can Do. We are here at Radford High School, located on the island of Oahu, near the joint base of Pearl Harbor Hickam and the Arizona Memorial. When established in 1957, Radford's original mascot was not a ramp. But in the early 1960s, the Navy had generously donated uniforms to the athletic program. The decorated sleeves of these uniforms resembled ram horns and inspired the adoption of a ram as our mascot. The original Pappy the Ram lived on campus until passing in the late 60s. From then on to the 1990s, a live ram was brought to campus to promote school spirit during the annual week-long homecoming celebration. Nowadays, students are selected to embody the spirit of Pappy while wearing a mascot costume and energizing the crowd at school events. Up next, the Radford Digital Media Learning Center students shares a story about how one former Radford football coach uses our school tradition to help make his play successful both on and off the field. I want to make sure that my, my young men that have encountered my coaching know how much I care for this sport, how much passion and how much love I have for it. Fred Salanoa, Radford High School's varsity football coach, led his team to win the 2015 D2 State Championship. Many years before, Sal Noah grew up on Rafford's field, even attending football practices as a child. Um, you know, it was uh, probably I was about three years old, um, 1981. My dad was a coach here under um, Mr. Velasco and uh, with Mr. Stevens, and uh, he used to bring me around. And, and he was he was also obviously coaching. My brother was playing on the on that team as well. Fred Salanoa continued to make football a part of his life as he grew up, eventually becoming a quarterback for the Radford Rams. You know, being put into the Pop Warner divisions uh, when I was in fourth grade, having the opportunity to go to different camps around the nation, especially at BYU where my brother was playing. I was able to participate in some football camps and get better as a quarterback. After graduating from Eastern Washington College, Salano went back to his roots and started to coach football at Radford. Fred was uh, assistant uh, at the time we were, uh, I was coaching, so he brought a different perspective in terms of opening up the game. Of course, uh, his approach to offense uh, brought new ideas, so it was a plus for Radford. 
After 13 seasons, Salano went on to lead the Rams to win the Division II state championship in 2015. His primary goal was not to win a championship, but to teach his players life lessons. You know, I'm just grateful for the opportunity to have had to coach them and mentor them throughout their small high school career. I'm hoping that I at least left a lasting impression on them that they can take into their lives as they carry on in their future to, you know, possibly help them be successful. One of the players Salanoa made a lasting impression on is Hawaii News Now's weekend sports anchor Ian Schering. I would look him in the eye and tell him that I am where I am today because of what I learned from you and what I learned from your football program. But to have a coach who emphasized those things, who emphasized family, who emphasized loyalty, who emphasized teamwork more than the average person does, uh, I think directly translates into where I am today. The passion that I have for the sport and the love I have for the sport, um, I came every day, uh, whether I was a football player or athlete or a coach, um, I came every day with um, an emphasis in mind to make sure that I competed and, and uh, gave my best and gave my all. After bringing Radford to a state championship in 2015, Coach Fred Salanoa is now coaching football at Bunaho School. This is Dion Nguyen from Radford High School for Hiki No. We're on the campus of Konoana High School on the Kona side of the Hawaii Island. This area is known as Wildcat Country and we proudly bleed green. But Konoana's mascot has not always been the Wildcat. Konoana was established in 1921 and known as the Blue and White Knights. In the early years, the Konoana football players could not afford uniforms and were given old ones from the University of Hawaii at Manoa and were referred to as the Green and White Knights. But in 1928, the young broadcaster Ezra Crane announces on KGU Radio how the Konoana football team displayed a never give up attitude and made the comment, those kids play like a bunch of wildcats and the rest is history. The next story by the Hikino students at Konawana High School is about how couples in committed relationships go through times of joy and sadness regardless of their sexual orientation. I was lucky to have a partner that was that great. Um, I don't think going into a relationship with a partner, knowing the partner cares about you, and your partner becomes your best friend. And so when we started out, we were together 31 years. Um, over the 31 years, uh, six years ago, or maybe five years ago, he asked me to marry him. And I said, married? Why do we have to get married? Well, it makes things legal, makes things easy. So in case something happens, you get something out of the marriage, like any normal couple. I agreed to that. We were married at 1201 down at Kilho Beach, and we had about 60 people there. All of, my, all of our friends from the mainland and Honolulu came in and uh, took part in this wedding. I mean, here we are at 1201, the fireworks were going. We had <laughs> Chinese, everything, everything you can possibly think to celebrate this wedding. It was awesome. He had a disease <clears throat> and it had nothing to do with AIDS. And it was a disease, I can't remember what it was called, but it started from his foot on up. And it started when he was young, he played tennis and for some reason he had an injury that never went away and so it kind of creeped up on his legs. It was something that was, it kept poking at him like needles. And he was going to the doctor, it was about 10 years down the line that he was suffering this whole thing. So the doctor said to him, we have to treat, treat you with morphine. So he came home and he said to me, you know what, Gene, I will not use morphine because the, what they have said that I could get a heart attack, I could be an invalid, I could do this, he said, I don't want it. So surprisingly enough, he didn't do that. So two weeks later is when the pain was so severe that it got up to his heart and he couldn't take it anymore. Richard committed suicide, he hung himself. And then when I called the paramedics and I, I went ballistic. So the police officers came up and they said to me, Uncle Bucky, what's happening? 
I said, it's over there. The two officers looked at him and started to cry. You know, losing a partner after having a partner and a friend for 30 odd years, you're lost in the world without somebody you can actually share and talk to. I mean, we shared so many things and it's difficult, it really is. I mean, you know, five years has gone, but it's still not the same. I don't think it'll ever be the same. Not unless there's a lucky star that falls in front of me and says, come on, let's go. Now, a Maui High School story from the Hikino archives about the impact of Hawaii's same-sex marriage law on a local wedding business. Okay, so I'm creating a focal point for the ceremony. Kevin Ribello is an officiant and photographer for both same-sex and straight weddings in Hawaii. I would say most of the couples that we marry, both visitor and local, have all been together 10 on years on up. They've been waiting for this. Ribello is also in a same-sex relationship. Well, when we met 20 years ago, we wanted to get married. As a gay couple, we wanted to have you know, the same opportunities that straight couples do when they get married. Before Senate Bill 1 legalizing same-sex marriage passed on November 13, 2013, Rebella would perform marriage ceremonies that were not recognized by the state, but served as personal expressions and political statements. We would do it exact same way as a straight wedding. For us, it was a civil rights issue. So I never called them commitment ceremonies. We always called them weddings and marriage because to us, that's what we were fighting for. After Hawaii became the 15th state to legalize same-sex marriage, Rebello benefited both personally and professionally. Oh, we were ecstatic. It was like a battle that we finally won. Now he can share that satisfaction with other same-sex couples. We set up all their license appointment with the agents. There's no waiting period. Couples simply go online, fill out the application, meet with the agent, and can get married that same day. So it's just easy to get married in Hawaii. Hey, Tom, this is Kevin at Hawaii Wedding again. State Representative Chris Lee was one of the most vocal proponents for marriage equality in Hawaii. Because this isn't only about uh, fulfilling our obligation to do the right thing under the Constitution, but it's about doing what's right for everybody here in Hawaii. And with tourism the center of our economy, this was another step in that direction. So you guys should be ready for the reception about that We time. should, yeah. Representative Lee is anticipating an economic boost for local businesses who want to capitalize on the legalization of same-sex marriage. You know, especially here in Hawaii where aloha is what binds us all together and it's what we sell to tourists visiting the state. We find that the University of Hawaii has an economic analysis that said $217 million in additional tax revenue and additional monies coming into the state uh, we're going to see over the next two years. Ribello is already seeing the impact of the new law on his business. He has booked between 30 and 40 same-sex weddings since Senate Bill 1 was put into effect on December 2nd. We've seen a tremendous increase in business. We probably book one wedding a day, gay and lesbian weddings, whereas in the past maybe two a month. So this is, for example, the month of December. You can tell that on certain days we had up to four weddings a day. Between his full planner, Kevin is also ready to take advantage of the legalization for himself. We've been together 20 years. We had a ceremony 12 years ago, and then we're going to get our Hawaii marriage license actually tomorrow, believe it or not. This is Michelle Gima from Maui High School for Hikino. Now, from Kuokala Milo'li'i Hipu'u Virtual Academy in South Kona, a new approach to t-shirt design. Stamps can be an expensive craft material, and it can be hard to find stamps that you like. Creating stamps from recycled materials can be a cheap and easy alternative. To create your stamp, you will need recycled foam board. Here we are using old packing material. A utility knife. A marker. Paint. Paint brushes. And the surface you would like to stamp. First, draw your shape onto the foam board. Then, carefully cut it out with the utility knife. Younger kids may need help. Now paint onto the stamp and stamp it onto your surface. We hope you have fun creating beautiful designs from recycled materials. This is Grace and Bibi from Kua Okala, Hipu'u Milili'i Virtual Academy for Hikino. 
Aloha and welcome to Kainalu Elementary School located on the windward side on the island of Oahu. Our school mascot is a dolphin named Winter. Winter greets students at assemblies and everyone just loves our school mascot. Dolphins are highly intelligent marine mammals. They are curious and sociable just like the students at Kainalu School. Coming up is a story about vermicomposting by Kainalu Elementary School students and how students learn to work together to care for their worm bins. Third graders at Kainalu Elementary have been practicing the art of vermicomposting, using earthworms to convert organic waste into fertilizer. Students take turns caring for the worm bins. On Mondays, the worm bins are transferred from one third grade homeroom to the next. The worm bins are watered twice a day because worms love moisture and thrive in it. The excess water drains into a bucket to produce a nutritious worm tea. The worm tea is a great natural fertilizer for plants. Fridays are feeding days. The custodial and cafeteria staff collect discarded food from school lunches and the third graders are tasked with picking up the food waste and feeding the worms. We feed our worms vegetables, grains, fruits, and rinds, but no meats or dairy products because worms don't like those kinds of food. Next, we cover the worms with a worm blanket made from shredded paper from our school office. And we are here to pick up the shredded paper for the worms. The shredded paper for the compost. It's right here. Thank you. Thank you. The moist worm blanket protects the worms that are sensitive to light. This helps the worms to digest the food and paper to produce a worm casting, a natural fertilizer. After three to four months, the worm casting becomes a rich black fertilizer that contains more nutrients than ordinary soil. This is what the worms produce. This is called vermicast also known as black gold. The casting is spread around to promote healthy plant growth. We learned about the FBI, fungi, bacteria, and invertebrates, and how they work together to break down the compost. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to get in here, and we need to pull the worms out. Oh. We harvest the worms and we put them into new bigger bins. We transferred the worms to bigger bins as they started to multiply. We are shredding cardboard for the worm bins. The shredded cardboard is the first layer in the worm bin. Then we put the worms on the moist cardboard. Another kind of composting we learn about is aerobic composting. In Kainalu's garden, we make compost from decayed organic matter to provide a natural fertilizer for the soil. Custodians bring organic matter and they, we store it right here so the kids can process it and chop it and then this material we use in our compost bed. Food waste is also added to the compost bed. We then cover the food waste with green and brown matter. Green rich in nitrogen and brown rich in carbon. And then we let it rest for a few months and we just water it. And it will decompose and decrease in size and that black gold is the final product. This is how Kainalu makes black gold. Our goal is to become a zero-waste campus. We've been recycling more than six pounds of food waste every week. We hope that Kainalu students will learn to be resourceful and inspire others to reuse and recycle to help our environment. This is Karen Owens from Kainalu Elementary School for Hiki No. Well, we've come to the end of this episode of Hiki No. Remember, all of these stories were written, shot, and edited by students like us. We hope you enjoyed watching them as much as we enjoyed sharing them with you. Be sure to tune in next week for more proof that Hawaii students hiki no. Can do.
Broadcasts of Hiki no are made possible by the support of viewers like you. Mahalo. And by Bank of Hawaii Foundation. Investing in Hawaii's future by promoting collaboration, critical thinking, and other 21st century skills through Hiki no.